Ladies and gentlemen, my first guest tonight is an Emmy and Tony Award winning actor who has starred in everything from Footloose to The Crown. Please welcome John Lithgow. Nice to see you again, my friend. Great to be back. You look uh, fit as a fiddle. As do you. You only go, thanks very much. Thank and, you very much. And this band. Unbelievable. I, I was. Yeah. You know, I. Yeah, I was watching them play in, in the dressing room during yeah. your, your yeah, yeah. pre show. Yeah, yeah. They are so much better than I am. You got to give them more time. Oh, man. So I, we can leave right now and they can just play. <laughs> That'll be fine. Fine. <laughs> fine. Um, uh, I, I'm so happy you're here, and I'm also so happy and, uh, and just thrilled that you took the time tonight to be here, because I understand that not only are you on Broadway right now in, in the show uh, Hillary and Clinton, mm -hmm. okay, at the Golden Theater, but you literally are between shows. You That's did right. a matinee, and you're doing a show That's tonight. Right. Th this was my second standing ovation out of three today. <laughs> <laughs> so, got, got one more coming. Right, one more to come. Now, <laughs> as 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 a thespian, as the man of the stage, how do you drink in a standing ovation? Because it's such an outpouring of appreciation from an audience. Like, do do you do you lean against it like a strong wind? What do you? How do you? How do you handle it? Let me. Let me. If you just, don't mind, could, I, could if we if we could uh, if we could stir up a standing ovation? Would you show me the proper way to appreciating standing ovation? Sure. Go right. ahead. Humility. I say, cultivate humility. You never know when you're going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, uh, you, you've done so many shows on Broadway. What, what draws you back? What's the thing that you love most about being uh, on the stage here in New York? Well, I, I mean, it's just the thing that draws all actors to the theater. Uh, it's interacting with the audience and being a member of... Uh, of, uh, of an ensemble and a company that just works together day in and day out. Uh, but mainly it's the interaction. You do a movie, and by the time you see it, your whole memory of the experience is a year old. Mm -hmm. And it's all done in chunks. You don't actually it's have the chunks. run, the feel of actually doing the entire, yeah, the entire I, story at once. I guess, in essence, it's you're living through the story at the same time your audience is experiencing it. Mm. It's kind of like what you do every night. I, though, I mean, it's, it's just that intense interaction. Right, yeah. Somebody before the show asked me if I watched the show when I get home, and I said, no, I just was there. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I was yeah, there. True. You and I went through it at the same time. That's true. Now, uh, as I said before, it's, it's at the Golden Theater with the, the wonderful Laurie Metcalf. Yes, the great and... Laurie Metcalf. <laughs> so it's, call, it's called Hillary and Clinton, and do you... Play I play Bill. Bill. You I play Bill. 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 Okay. And what's what's the play about? It's set. It's a piece of history. Uh, it's it's a political play, but much more a marriage play. Uh, it's set at a very interesting historical moment: the New Hampshire primary of 2008, when Hillary was running against Barack Obama. Oh, and she had just lost in Iowa. She had just lost in Iowa. And I won't tell you what happened in New Hampshire, because probably most people have forgotten. But that's part of the... Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's it's a, a marvelously unexpected play by one of our great young playwrights, Lucas Nath. Mm -hmm. uh, and Lori and I make absolutely no effort to imitate Bill and... Hillary. We are sort of a metaphor for them. Really? Because you're, 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 you're you are a great mimic. Well, yeah. Thank you. I take that as... I, 
I don't want that compliment to pass yes. me by. I mean, you're not an impressionist, but certainly we, you seemed like Churchill to me. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't presume to imitate Bill. He, he is so much a part of our lives, mm -hmm. even now. This is a history play, but it's a very, very recent history that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lucas, in the, the stage directions of his play, he says, don't be tempted to imitate these people. Think about playing the role of Henry V or Richard III. He thinks about it in very Shakespearean terms. Uh, and and I, I completely agree. And the minute I start doggedly imitating Bill Clinton, it becomes a Saturday Night Live sketch. And even, <laughs> and even though it's, it's a, it's a, there's plenty of comedy in the play, there's plenty of laughter, it's a very seriously intended play. And you're also, uh, tomorrow night, Pet Cemetery. Yes, opens. very, very the theaters. Very, very yeah. similar? Yeah, very similar. <laughs> <laughs> very similar. <laughs> And uh, you played Judd Crandall, mm -hmm. uh, the heavy here. Yes. Okay. I don't think he's the heavy. You know, when you play a villain, he's always your favorite character. You're on his side. <laughs> How scary is it? Because I scare easily. Don't go. <laughs> it's okay. terrifying. I don't, I, nor do I, I uh, Stephen, I'm not a, uh, I, I don't have a lot of tolerance for horror. I don't go to horror. I'm not a horror fan. I went to see it with my wife in an empty theater, and it scared the <laughs> out of me. And, and you were there. And I knew all my lines, you know? I knew what was coming. It was like crazy. It, I was tr truly shaken. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's what a lot of people love to see. Yeah, and I don't know me, why. Believe me, we, we deliver. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, 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 Broadway, the theater, uh, I also know you're a musician, but you're also an author. No, you're a musician. Oh. And author, you've got a, a, a new uh, book oh coming God. out. Uh, this is an illustration on the front. It's called Dumpty. And <laughs> you... You're also... Yes. And that's, that's my illustration. That's, you, you, you painted this cover I, illustration I right there. The that's very one. good. Yes. And, and it's, uh, it's an age of Trump in verse. You're also a poet. Which, well, uh, yes. well, I'm a, a, a doggerel poet. Uh, I'm a sort of uh, reckless rhymester. Okay. Uh, but yes, I, it comes out in the fall. It comes out end of October. But my deadline to finish all the poems was yesterday. And I, by so God, done. I did it. Yeah. Do you... Well, uh, Maestro, I, I know you don't have the text with you right now, but uh -huh. would, you, would you be willing to share... Any of, uh, any of your doggerel poetry with us? In a word, yes. Uh, it, it, it's a, the, the poems are a kind of chronicle of the last crazy two years, very much the way uh, you chronicle uh, this political moment yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, they're comic, doggerel, satirical poems. Uh, and I tried over the last couple of years. Yes. <laughs> there you go. That's a pro. You call that yes. a pro right there. Well, he took... He told me to bring it, so I brought it. Uh, I tried f ever s for the, about the last uh, eight months to respond in, in real time as much as I could to what was going on. So this is the first two stanzas, the, the first two of five stanzas of the last poem of the book. And it's based on the events of the last 10 days. Ladies and gentlemen, John Lithgow, in a dramatic reading, from Dumpty. Uh, Dumpty, by the way, is, is my name for our president, as in, as in Trumpy Dumpty, but that's another poem. It's, a, uh, here, it's, called, it's called Afterward. The report was at hand and Dumpty was manic, awash in a flood of distemper and panic. At lush Mar-a-Lago, his Florida lair, he braced for Bob Muller, his ruthless Javert. His heart skipped a beat when from distant D.C. came a call from Bill Barr, his conniving A.G. <laughs> Dumpty lurched from his bed with a ponderous groan, and with trembling fingers, he picked up the phone. <laughs> Good news, Barr exclaimed. We're home free. It's a wash. The report's a big nothing that's easy to quash. Thus began Barr's campaign to covertly impede it, since he, only he, was entitled to read it. 
In fact, he just gave it a cursory glance, but that hadn't thwarted his victory dance, nor forestalled his appalling misrepresentation, proclaiming the POTUS's exoneration. <laughs> uh, Hillary and Clinton is at the Golden Theater on Broadway. John Lithgow, everybody. We'll be right back with Georgia Democrat Stacey Abrams.